Students graduating in May are walking the stage and leaving with more than a diploma. We have an in-depth look at student debt coming up. Later, if you've ever seen flashing lights in your rearview mirror while on campus, you're probably familiar with the Texas Tech Police Department. But they don't just give out tickets. We'll have more about the campus law enforcement officers. And they're mean, they're green, and they're really popular in one West Texas town. We have all the details on Sweetwater's Rattlesnake Roundup. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Wednesday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Jenna Hay. And I'm Ty Basquez. Every year, college tuition and fees increase, making the cost of getting an education unaffordable. And every year, more and more students are left with few options to pay for school. Reporter Janet Moreno joins us in the studio with a look at the pressing issue of student debt. Janet? Thanks, Jenna and Ty. Nearly half of this year's freshmen took out an average loan of $7,400 just to start their college career, and that number increases every year. But there are options for help if you know where to look. Graduation is just around the corner, which means soon after tech students turn their tassels, they'll be entering their student loan grace period. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, 49% of tech students have federal student loans, and on average, a student's loan's amount per year is over $8,000. Judith Gutierrez, a senior general studies major, said she had to take out her first loan her senior year because she no longer qualified for financial aid. My dad got a new job, so now I'm in that position that I think a lot of students are in, where your parents don't make enough money to pay for your college, but they make too much money to qualify for FAFSA. So I had to get a student loan for my last year of college. Senior University Studies major Rochelle Flanoy said federal grants were never enough to cover her tuition and housing. She said she relied on loans because she didn't know much about scholarships, and she now estimates her debt will be around $20,000 after graduation. I really didn't have a lot of knowledge about scholarships. I'm a first-generation college student, so I didn't, I, like me going to college was brand new for our family. Um, so I, I think I was just really not educated in a lot of the areas as far as other options other than loans, only because tech was pushing, like, loans are always available, loans are always available. So I, was, I just took the loans because that's basically all that I knew at the time. Angela Mazzolini, program director for Red to Black, said Red to Black offers students loan guidance and can help graduating seniors make a plan to pay back their loans. So students who are graduating and might have student loan debt, um, we can offer to sit down with them and look at what repayment plan might be best for them based on their estimated income. Um, we're happy to do that with any student that wants to come in. Um, and then they'll have a plan. They know exactly what amount is going to come out of their account um, every month. And so that then helps them make future plans as well. All Red to Black services are free for tech students. And Mazzolini suggests students visit Red to Black before they fall into major debt. A good time to come visit Red to Black about student loans would be any time in the process, whether they're just getting started, um, because a lot of students will take out more loans than they actually need, and then they're left with a lot of repayment that wouldn't have been necessary had they come talk to us, create a budget, figure out how much you actually need. For MCTV, I'm Janet Moreno. Red to Black offices are located in the sub-east basement in room 24. They are open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And you can find much more information about their services by visiting the website on your screen. Jenna, back to you. Thanks, Janet. Debt is not the only issue that can get students into trouble. Another big problem is public intoxication. After a night of fun on the town, many students walk back to their dorms without thinking about the consequences of being drunk in public. If a student is found intoxicated or caught in possession of alcohol, they are required to report to the Office of Student Conduct. Typically, if it's a public intoxication, it's typically a deferred suspension. We also can mandate things like alcohol, EDU, education classes, counseling, because after all, we're here to help the student. In 2013, more than 75% of alcohol referrals took place inside of student resident halls. Campus crimes, such as public intoxication, are handled by the Texas Tech Police Department, but TTPD does more than just issue tickets. Reporter Alyssa Herzog has a closer look at the role of the campus law enforcement group. 
Texas Tech has its very own police department here on campus, but some students are unaware of what the department is in charge of and what these police officers do for the campus. Administrative Captain of the TTPD, Stephen Hinkle, shared the truths of this department. There's a big misconception with the Texas Tech Police Department. Um, most students believe that we only have jurisdiction on this campus. That's not the case. Case is we actually have jurisdiction anywhere Texas Tech owns, rents, leases, or appropriates property which is every county in the state of Texas except one, and it's down on the border. So we pretty much have statewide jurisdiction. Hinkle said campus-wide crimes differ from community-wide crimes, and some offenses are more common than others. I would say for crimes against um, people would be more like your thefts and your criminal mischiefs. Um, a lot of bicycle thefts. Um, a lot of the thefts that occur with personal property for the students are because the students like we'll go to the library, leave their stuff laying on a table, run to the restroom. When they come back, their stuff's gone. The criminal mischiefs are in the dorms where they're damaging ceiling tiles, exit signs, the, the big ashtray things they have out front, the glass ones. Um, that happens quite a bit during the semester. Um, and then, of course, we have, uh, you know, with any college campus, we have a lot of alcohol and, and drug uh, violations. So, Captain Hinkle shared more information on how the officers patrol the campus. We actually do break the campus up into zones, um, and each officer is assigned a, a different zone, or a beat, whatever you want to call it. That means they're responsible for everything in that north beat, so all the parking lots, all the buildings. If anything happens, they're the ones that are going to go take the calls, um, so that's why we break it up. But they always go, you know, obviously the campus is not that big of a place when you're driving, um, so they'll go to all of the zones, and they back up each other. There are many ways to contact the TTPD in case of emergencies or to report crimes. You can simply dial 911 or visit one of the two campus stations. We also have the substation over at the, um, the student union building, so a lot of our students will go in there and we'll, and we'll get the officers out to them. Um, the, the good thing about us being here and we having, us having the substation, we actually can get to any spot on this campus within two minutes of a phone call. For MCTV, I'm Alyssa Herzog. TTPD is available 24 hours a day. If you have an emergency, you can dial 9911 from any campus phone. For a non-emergency assistance, dial 742-3931. Diversity Week is taking place right now on campus. This week is dedicated to celebrating and understanding the importance of diversity throughout the community and Texas Tech University. Many events are scheduled this week throughout the campus community, with several ongoing events taking place at the sub. The festivities include sampling of free food, panel discussions, and film screening, just to name a few. On Saturday, the week will conclude with the annual celebration of Holy, the Festival of Colors at Urbanowski Park. Holy will take place from four to nine, and all participants are encouraged to wear white clothing that they don't mind getting dirty. For more information and a list of events going on this week, visit the website on your screen. Also this week, you have a chance to get a closer look at what it's like to study abroad. Adventures in Study Abroad is a photo exhibit currently on display at the International Cultural Center. The exhibit features photos by various students who have traveled to other countries while pursuing their education. The exhibit is meant to pr promote interest and awareness in Texas Tech's Study Abroad program. A closing reception for the exhibit will be held on Wednesday, April 15th from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. and is open to the public. Both the exhibit and reception are part of the annual International Week festivities. International Week is April 12th through 17th. If you've been by the rec center recently, you may have noticed some big changes going on with one of the most popular indoor attractions. The rock wall at the Robert E. Wall Recreational Center it's currently undergoing renovations. The original rock wall has been in place for more than 15 years and was becoming a safety hazard for the climbers. The updated wall will not only be safer, but it will maximize the use of the space and offer a better experience for climbers. I think it's really going to be a cool change for us. We're going to get something completely different. Um, we're going to be able to kind of expand our climbing capabilities with this new wall, which is really cool. The new rock wall will be expected to be completed by May 15th. The facility will be available for use during the summer. Last Friday was the beginning of spring, but even if you didn't know that, you have probably noticed the signs of this season around campus. Spring has sprung here at Texas Tech, and that's most evident with physical plants yearly installation of tulips throughout the campus. 
Memorial Circle is also looking very green, showing positive results from last year's campus beautification projects. The trees around Memorial Circle are also in bloom, making this one of the best times to be on campus. Well, the flowers and green grass aren't the only signs of spring. We've also been seeing sunny skies and a lot warmer temperatures. But how warm will it get? Weather specialist Carly Smith joins us with the first look at our forecast. Carly? Thanks, Janae. You know, it definitely has been a beautiful day out here on the South Plains with high temperatures soaring into the upper 80s. But a lot of change will be coming tonight as a cold front pushes through. It will cause things to become a little windy and gusty and possibly even have some blowing dirt. Now, along with those strong winds, that does bring a fire danger warning to the area. And so we are in a red flag watch this afternoon, which is in effect from 1 to 9 p.m. And so that is mainly for grassy areas. Any grass with the wind and the dry temperatures, uh, dry warm temperatures can definitely catch a fire if the flame is started. But shouldn't be too bad, especially with the rains that we and the snow that we had been getting earlier this year. So as we take a look at temperatures tonight, those temperatures will drop into the 30s. Not too cool, but 37 is kind of cool. Partly cloudy skies and once again, those winds will cause things to be a little dusty. Winds will be northeast 20 to 30 miles per hour and gusts could be even stronger than that, possibly climbing into the 50 mile per hour range. Now, as we take a look at tomorrow's high, it will be slightly cooler because we have that cold front. So highs will be in the 60s, 64, sunny and warm for the most part. Winds north 10 to 15 miles per hour, so they'll calm down just a little bit tomorrow. So overall, it looks like it should still be a pretty nice day after the dust blows through tonight. Back to you guys. Thanks, Carly. Many students do more than just go to class and study each week. A lot of them actually go out in the community and help make a difference. That's right, Jenna. And one campus organization is helping bring a smile to a deserving child one step at a time. Reporter Caitlin Kravick has more. A group of students at Texas Tech are set to impact a Lubbock child's life this next month. The group is called Wishmakers on Campus an affiliate of the Lubbock Make-A-Wish chapter. Lauren Riddle, president of Wishmakers, has been a part of the organization since its very beginning. We're, we've really been trying to plan this walk for a while, and now we're able to um, really reach out into the community and spread the word. The race will take place on April 18th, starting at 10.30 a.m. at the Buddy Holly Recreation Area off of University in North Lubbock. The purpose of the walk is to raise $8,000 to grant a deserving Lubbock child's wish. Chloe Gold, social media director for Wishmakers, says the group has been reaching out to the community. I joined Wishmakers because I think the ability to change or impact a child's life is truly just spectacular. Caitlin Kidd, vice president, says that it's important for college students to give back to their community. It makes you feel good inside and what's better than to help the community. It's just a truly humbling experience and I think every college student should have the ability or want the ability to do that for someone else. Registration for the walk is now open and it only costs $25 to participate. For more information on the event, you can visit the Walk for Wishes Facebook event page. For MCTV, I'm Caitlin Kravick. If you've spent much time in West Texas, you might recognize this sound. If that didn't scare you off, then stick around. Reporter Laura Duclos will have a look at the unique Small Town Texas event coming up next. And the Texas Tech baseball team struggled in their conference opener this weekend. Alyssa Herzog will be in here with all the details along with the latest scores in sports. Stay with us and we'll be back right after the break. This is you. You want to be a director in Hollywood? Maybe you want to capture someone's attention on a 30 second spot. Maybe you'd rather be a social media manager or you want to sit behind the world news desk. You can do that here at the College of Media and Communication at Texas Tech University with a degree in advertising, electronic media, journalism, media strategies, or public relations. From here, it's possible. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Every year, tens of thousands of people gather a few hours south of Lubbock to experience a unique event that is considered the largest of its kind in the world. Reporter Laura Duclos joins us with more on an event that can leave attendees rattled. <laughs> Laura, 
Thanks, Ty and Jenna. Sweetwater, Texas is home to less than 11,000 people. However, it is the windmill capital of the nation, and once every year during the second weekend of March, it's home to the world's largest rattlesnake roundup. For the past 57 years, the second weekend of March is reserved for an event that is a little bit out of the ordinary. What originally began as a form of population control eventually grew to become the world's largest festival of its kind. Uh, we try to get everyone we can around to uh, bring us rattlesnakes. We buy snakes from all the hunters here and then we process them. We milk them for the venom, we uh, cook them upstairs for people to try sample platters and uh, everything we do for the venom is for the research part of it and that's really the most important part of our roundup. David Sager is a member of the JCs, the group who puts on the event. Sager helps teach the public about the snakes and explains the importance of the Roundup. It's also, uh, we're trying to keep the rattlesnake population a little bit under control in our area because this area is full of rattlesnakes. And so by doing this, we, we get about 5,000 pounds a year average. And by doing that, we're keeping the snakes out of town. The Rattlesnake Roundup, founded in 1958, is a festival that strikes the curiosity of thousands of people from around the globe. It consists of an indoor and outdoor flea market, a gun, knife, and coin show, barbecue contests, a pageant, a carnival, and of course, the rattlesnake exhibits themselves. Although the Roundup has faced controversy in recent years, claiming that it's unnecessary and cruel, Sager says that there are rules in place to help preserve the local ecosystem. It's, uh, it's more or less animal control. We have a bag limit on them. You're, uh, you have to have your hunting license, a small game license, or a non-game license also to do this. And uh, it's just another hunting. For more information about Sweetwater's most famous event, check out their website at rattlesnakeroundup.net. Ty, back to you. Thanks, Laura. Mark your calendars and join the Tech Activities Board Thursday evening for a night of laughter. Tab will provide an open mic style comedy night for all tech students. Whether you plan to dazzle the crowd with your humor or simply enjoy a show, a comedy night in, in the spotlight has something for everyone. The event takes place at 8 p.m. in the Matador room of the sub. This event is free with a student ID. And on Saturday, the 8th annual Holy Fest of all of colors will take place at the Rec Center Fields. Free food, t-shirts, music, and cultural performances are all part of the event, along with the chance to throw colored powders at family and friends in celebration of spring. All are welcome to attend and are asked to wear white, as it is the traditional dress for the day. The event will begin at 4 p.m. Saturday evening, we'll give an all pride and prejudice, and Doctor Who admires the opportunity to dance the night away. Texas Tech Vernacular Music Center is hosting a fundraiser with the live music from the Elegant Savages Orchestra and dancing for all-time Lord Enabled Eras. The dance will be at the Sculpture Court of the Museum at Texas Tech beginning at 7 and ending at 10. Tech softball has had its share of ups and downs this season, but how did they fare last week? Alyssa Herzog has all the details in sports. And we've experienced much warmer weather days this past week, but will these temperatures last? Weather specialist Carly Smith has the latest look at the forecast for the week, coming up next. That's slow, that's slow. That's slow. There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. It has been a beautiful day out here on the South Plains. It is starting to become a little windy as you can see behind me. Those winds will begin to pick up as we head into later this afternoon and into the evening hours. For right now, the Lubbock area is going to be for the most part dry and clear of storms. But as we take a look, you can see that that's not the case for the rest of the country, especially Oklahoma. They do have a marginal or moderate severe risk for their area, especially for the towns of 
uh, Oklahoma City and up toward the Tulsa area. Then around them, a slider risk and that does dip kind of into the Metroplex area. Lubbock is in this green area. That just means that we do have a chance for some rain, but nothing should be severe. Our rain chances look slim and the wind chances look even more. Now this storm is happening because a cold front is pushing through the area. That's helping the air rise and storms form. So what is happening in our area with the winds will be the story. So as we take a look at winds, this is for 7 p.m. The winds will begin to change direction as the cold front pushes into our area. You'll see that Tulia has winds at 26 knots, which is anywhere from 27 to 30 miles per hour. And so those winds will begin to push through Lubbock right at 7 p.m. Won't be too windy, but as that cold front pushes through, it'll change. So later tonight around 9 p.m., you will see stronger wind gusts in the Lubbock area, 27 knots. So it will be strong and those winds can gust to 50 miles per hour along this cold front line. And that will also be causing some blowing dust, especially with plowing season starting. So as we take a look at low temperatures across the area, Lubbock will drop to 39 degrees, slight cool, a little cool, but not too bad. We've got 30s across the area with Post and other areas off the Caprock in the 40s. So highs tomorrow will be cooler because of that cold front. High temperatures tomorrow, Lubbock right at 64 degrees. We've got 60s pretty consistent throughout the area, anywhere from 62 to 65 degrees. So it looks like it will be a nice day on the South Plains tomorrow. A little cooler, but it shouldn't be too bad. It's kind of hot today. Some sweat happening, you know, outside when you're walking to class. But across the area into this weekend, we will see temperatures throughout the 70s in the whole state of Texas. So it looks like it will be a nice Friday then. Saturday temperatures, well, once again, will be warmer for Lubbock, possibly climbing into the 80s. And we've got 70s in eastern regions of the state. So Sunday, another travel day possibly for Red Raiders. We've got Sunday temperatures, once again, 80s throughout West Texas and 70s to the east. So it looks like it will be a nice weekend across the area, especially for that Red Raider baseball series against Kansas. So as we take a look at our seven, six day forecast, the first three days, we've got 60s Thursday, a little warmer Friday, and then 80s on Saturday. So winds will be north Thursday. That's why our temperatures are a little cooler. Lows 30s and then 40s Saturday. Winds will shift back to the west on Friday and then west southwest on Saturday. So the next three days heading into our weekend, the end of the weekend, we have 89, almost could break into the 90s on Sunday, 48 degrees for a low southwest winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, another slight cool down with east winds, 5 to 15 miles per hour, and then Tuesday, still cool. There is a slim chance for showers, I believe, on Tuesday, but we'll see if that pulls through or not with east winds, 5 to 15 miles per hour. So these next three days or six days look pretty nice across the South Plains. Nothing to really worry about except for the wind tonight. Now this is severe weather season that usually starts about March. Lubbock's severe weather season picks up definitely in May and into June. So if severe weather strikes your area, be sure to check out the West Texas Vos Twitter account and use the West Texas Spotter hashtag. Now this hashtag is to help the National Weather Service see what's happening on the ground and we do encourage everyone to use it because it will help make severe weather warnings easier for your area and you'll be more prepared. So please use this hashtag if you see rain, if it's raining, if it's hailing, if it's windy, even tonight if the wind is strong, let us know. So back to you guys in the studio. Thanks Carly. The College of Media and Communication is a great place to get an education. I think both Jenna and I can speak from personal experience. Yeah, Ty, that's very true. But how do potential students find out about everything happening here in the college? Reporter Justin Gonzalez has a new look at a new ride for the college that's helping spread the word. Texas Tech faculty, staff, and students all gathered to witness the inaugural car launch of the new Nissan Armada SL. The first vehicle the car dealership McGavick Nissan has sponsored for Texas Tech's College of Media and Communication. Dean David Perlmutter began the reception by thanking Mr. Steve McGavick for his generosity and kindness for creating this milestone. A milestone in which he said is a strong Texas Tech representation that will help the college's recruiters bear our banners far and wide. 
Alisa Ross, director of the Center for Student Success, said it was wonderful to see the support from all present and what this car truly represents. I think it just will show potential students and their parents even that we go the extra mile and that we're passionate about what we do and the commitment we have to our program and our students. But what is more exciting for Elisa is the fact that she grew up with the McGavick family, considering them her second family, and now they are a part of the College of Media and Communication. For becoming such a strong representation of the college, the car needed a name that would be the right fit. The college's very own student ambassador, Christy Cole, won the car naming contest, deciding upon the name of the Mast Communicator. Todd Chambers, interim associate dean for undergraduate affairs, said this is truly about the future of the college and the future of Texas Tech University. With MCTV, I'm Justin Gonzalez. It's been another busy week in tech athletics. Alyssa's got your weekly rundown of the scores and highlights next in sports. But first, we've had some sad news here at the College of Media and Communication. Longtime professor Robert Wernsman died on Sunday, March 15th, after a long battle with cancer. Wernsman spent 20 years in the newspaper business before teaching journalism here at Tech. He then spent the next 21 years as an instructor of record for various classes, including news writing in which he taught thousands of future journalists. The college will be holding a memorial service tomorrow afternoon at 5.30 p.m. in room 281, located in the Media and commu Communication Rotunda. Students, faculty, staff, and alumni will share stories and remember Professor Wernsman during the service. It is open to the public. Professor Robert Wernsman was 62 years old. We'll be right back. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Welcome back to the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Melissa Herzog, and here are your sports recaps and scores over the last week. Let's kick off some sports with some Texas Tech tennis. The women's tennis team, number 18, traveled to Austin on Sunday to face number 36, Texas, but fell short of a victory with a 2-4 loss against the Longhorns. The ranking for our Lady Raider tennis team is now number 23 after the unlucky results of that match. The girls will host Oklahoma at 5 p.m. on Friday for their next contest. The men's tennis team faced Louisiana Lafayette on Sunday at the McLeod Tennis Center here in Lubbock. The men brought home a win with a 6-1 score and is now ranked number 25 in the country. The men will travel to Fort Worth on Thursday to play TCU at 6 p.m. The softball team traveled to Seattle, Washington last week for a tournament beginning on Wednesday. The girls beat Seattle University 8-4 that day, but fell short of both games of a doubleheader versus number 18 Washington, losing 1-7 and 5-8 on Thursday. The softball team will also face Oklahoma this week in a three-game series beginning on Friday at 6 p.m. here in Lubbock. The Texas Tech baseball team hosted Oral Roberts at Dan Law Field last Wednesday and took home a win with a final score of 7-4. On Friday, the baseball team began a three-game series versus Oklahoma in Norman. Texas Tech won the first game on Friday, beating the Sooners 6-1. They played again on Saturday, but OU Trump Tech 5-2 and again on Sunday with a final score of 3-2. Then the men hosted New Mexico and lost again with a final score of 7-6. Texas Tech is now ranked number 17 in the country. The baseball team will host Kansas this weekend in hopes of turning around this losing streak. They plan to play at 2 p.m. on Saturday and 1 p.m. on Sunday at Danlaw Field at Rip Griffin Park. Some good news regarding the baseball team. Junior infielder Corey Raley was named the Big 12 Newcomer of the Week on Monday. This is the third Red Raider to be recognized for a weekly honor. Way to go, Corey. And that's all for MCTV Sports. Back to you, Jenna and Ty. Thanks, Alyssa. We'll be right back. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm. Nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Welcome back. You know, spring break's kind of wrapping up. How was yours? 
Oh man, I'm so sad it's over. Um, mine was awesome. I got to swim with dolphins and I got a little bit tanner. How about you? Well, that's awesome. I went to the beach, so obviously got some sun. Yeah, nice. The beaches are really nice this time of year. Absolutely. Well, that's all for this week's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thank you so much for joining us and be sure to check out ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you next week.